Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and I don't know what's up with me these days, but I seem to be going down a dark path towards the route of historicals. I don't know what's wrong with me now. It is kind of fun, and you do get a lot of bang for your buck. Plus, there's a lot of fun rule sets that I've been eyeing in, playing with the idea of trying out, so it seemed appropriate, and when the price is right, as these guys were, to give it a try. So this is actually some of the old War Games factory Celts, obviously, because it says Celt Warband on there. So you get 32 guys in here in hard plastic. Now, I'll be honest, I built some of the Celts, I think they were Celts or Gauls or whatever they were from Warlord. I know they reused that kit for quite a lot of purposes, and it just never gelled with me. Um, these do look pretty decent. We'll see how they turn out. Uh, I built a few of the various War Games factory historical kits at this point, and overall, I gotta say they, they've been pretty fun. Um, I still think of the ones that I've built, the samurai are still my least favorite with the way their weapons went together. It was just kind of a pain in the butt. All right, so let's take a look at these sprues. So we have six pairs of legs. Nope, seven because I can't count. Nope, eight. <laughs> We're still counting. I can't even fit them all on screen. So there's eight pairs of legs on this. Interesting to see that we have kind of the hands all kind of already set up there for the shield arms. I don't see any torsos with the left hand unattached. But that seems to be the case with a lot of historical models. You do have a couple that are bare chested. And then a few that have a shirt as well. And... Unfortunately, everybody's got their swords, well, at least quite a few do, have swords and scabbards already attached to their legs. I can see that being both a positive and a negative, just because, you know, I like having a lot of scabbards. So we get three of those sprues. And then we get to the shield sprue with all of the various heads. So it does look like we have a fair amount of variety. They are nicely cast faces, i got to say that, and there is a fair bit of differences here. We do have a couple of armored heads as well as unarmored. Looks like a standard topper. Little leader. I don't know if they had any kind of transfers. I know maybe that's just a warlord thing. I know warlord usually likes to include these decal water slide transfers. But it's not as if, at least with these, you can get away with just painting the center and some squiggly lines. So how many of these frames do we have? I do like the fact that we got plenty of shields with javelins. I always like those, and I remember the Warlord kit doesn't seem to really have a lot of those. There's only like one or two, I think, on the War Games Atlantic, Dark Age Irish as well. I do like having a lot of things to throw at people, I guess. And then our third sprue, we have four of these with a whole bunch of other goodies on there. So again, these are more your command guys. Again, we still have the right arms. Well, I guess you have your left arm. I don't know. They all have at least one arm attached to them. Now, come to think of it, does this have hands? Oh, where are the hands then? There's no hands there. No hands here. Plenty of javelins and spears. Are those slings? Ooh, yay. I guess that's all the hands we get. But then we also have a few bladed weapons as well. Unfortunately or fortunately, um, we still have these weird grips. That was a thing that War Games Atlantic was really fond of doing. For some models, it wasn't really a problem. For some, like the Samurai, it was a real annoyance trying to get things to fit it didn't really work and i don't know where that fit in time wise with all of their other releases but for the most part the ancients and historical stuff that i've built from them really wasn't a problem the knives and blades and swords all went in their hands really easily so something to keep in mind in worst case scenario i'm sure if you're anything like me you'll find a use for all of these various blades and slings that's a nice one i haven't seen a lot of those lately in other games. So, give me a moment. I may not build 32 of them immediately, but we will definitely get a good pile of dudes all put together so we can see how they turn out. 
Well then, we ended up building a lot more Celts than originally expected. So let's show off some of the fruits of our labor. Uh, let's get one thing clear very quickly, and that's that these guys have really awkward poses. I mean, really awkward. And the sculpt quality is a bit mushy at times. And it probably would have helped if I had paid closer attention to who actually has their swords holstered and who does not. One thing that really irks me, besides the fact that I need to clean these still, is that the javelins are much shorter than the... I mean, these are the spears, basically, that he's got. And they're all longer than the ones that actually go in their hands. Even... Yeah, that was an odd choice. And some of them... One thing I do like, though, is that they actually have plenty of slings included if you want to do something different. Um, I can't think of many other plastic Dark Age... Not Dark Age, Ancient kits that actually have slingers as just an option included, other than the... Republic Legionnaires from Warlord. Those guys do. In fact, I built most of mine with slings. So, I mean, for what I paid, I gotta say, I'm pretty content. And I've even started to paint quite a bit of it. But, <laughs> this, yeah... This guy, as I said earlier, is getting fixed up. But you know what? He's painted. And I mean, for a massive group of guys all clumped together, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. I think from a distance, and when they're all mobbed up, it's not going to really be as noticeable of what kind of poor paint jobs they have. And on the other hand, you know what, they scale pretty well after having based them like the way I did. I think with a lot of the other contemporaries that they would have been fighting against. So these are both Victrix. And Imperial Roman from Warlord. A Frostgrave model, which I think if it was on a little bit bigger base, just to balance things out here, I think would be a fun source of kit bashing. I gotta do something with that Dacian. It bugs me. And if you really want to get interesting, I mean, they are pretty well in scale with the GW models. However, seeing that this kit is out of print, um, I wouldn't lose too much sleep over it. Obviously, I think there's better choices. If you don't want to have to worry about lots of, you know, pose choices and options, I'd say the Warlord kit is still pretty decent. I thought they were a little on the diminutive side, especially for, you know, Gauls are supposed to be like, you know, big, bad Celtic warriors. But on the other hand, Victrix does have a kit that has a lot of variety in terms of parts. And, you know, I bet you could probably get away with kit bashing and customizing between all of the various lines out there. So I think they're probably a good supplement to some of the other ones if you do happen to come across these. I mean, cheap, you know, fodder to bulk up your forces. You can't ever really go wrong with something like that. It's just, I think they are definitely a product of their times. And while they worked great then, I'd say they're starting to show their age now. And it's not that surprising that we haven't seen Warlord since they actually have a lot of those molds from War Games Factory. Haven't actually used any of these while they have, you know, put the Saxons and Vikings back into production, which I think are a much more versatile kit. And they worked a lot better than these guys in terms of poses. Like I said, I, I feel like there's some really awkward stuff here going on with their arms. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. They're just kind of doing their thing. So 
Other than that, I think, like I said, if you can find a box for a reasonable price, I think they're a good source of inexpensive parts, and I think that they would absolutely complement some of the other plastic lines out there if you want to continue to expand your kilts, galls, whatever kind of barbaric European hordes that you're into. And I mean, you could probably, you know, get away with using some fantasy pieces in there as well. I think I'm still going to have to see if I can do something with a bunch of frost grave leftover bits but i don't think they're going to work out with conquest <laughs> yeah that's just like especially they've been teasing some of the new conquest factions uh just ain't gonna work guys i think you're outclassed in terms of big brute barbaric warriors when it comes to that so fun little nostalgic blast from the past these war games factory Celtic warriors were. Hopefully we'll get some more painted up and hopefully we'll get some modern interpretations to show off in the future and compare them to. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamburlaine with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon. Bye bye.